On this episode of Josh's Car Corner, I'm gonna take you through all of the computers and the modules on the GTO, how they work, and what might be causing problems with the electronics in your car. So I've been looking at all the GTO Facebook groups lately and I've been seeing a lot of different posts about electronic issues that people are having with their cars, like the gauge cluster blinking in and out or the fuel gauge error contact dealer message coming across the cluster, all kinds of things like that. Random intermittent issues, electrical gremlins that come and go. So I thought I would actually make a video that goes through every single module in the GTO and every single computer and also how they work, how they're wired, why they work the way they work, and where you should be looking when you see problems happening with your car. So to begin, there aren't as many modules in the GTO as you may think there are, but it's kind of a goofy system that's kind of a hodgepodge of multiple different systems. And I'll explain that by saying, if you know anything about GM cars or any cars that have been built since about the mid 2000s, they all have a data system built into them called a CAN area network or a CAN. Now, the GTO has that network. All three years of the GTO have that network. The CAN network is a high speed network and it works kind of in the same way that like your home ethernet network would work. If you've got your home hardwired for say internet services, it kind of works in the same way except that communications go in and out of every single device that's part of the network and it's not like they're all connected back to a central point. It begins at the engine computer and then from there it goes out and it goes to all the other modules that operate on that high speed network protocol. I'm actually gonna cut here to a screenshot I've got of the service manual that actually shows the order of this network going through the different modules. So like I said, starts with the engine computer. Next place it goes is the ABS module or the electronic brake control module, you may know it as. From there, it goes back into the car through the dash and it goes to a connector that is down by the driver's side kick panel. Now, if you have an automatic transmission, its next hop is going to be to the transmission control module, which sits on the foot well right behind that kick panel on the driver's side floorboard. Then it comes back out of the transmission control module, and then from there, it goes into what's called the powertrain information module, and that's its uh, fourth stop. Now, it makes one last stop after that. It stops at the data link connector or the OBD2 port that's under the dash and it terminates there and the network stops. But all those modules communicate on the network and talk back and forth to each other on a simple twisted pair. But it's high speed communication and the cool thing about a CAN network is if you have any modules that are on that same CAN and speak the same language, you can just keep adding modules to the network. And as long as all the devices on the network know uh, that, that language, they can all communicate with each other. It's a really cool system that they started going to in about the mid 2000s. Now, that's half of the system. The other half of the system uses what's called the old class two serial protocol. This is more like, if you remember the days of using a dial-up modem in the 90s. It's a very slow protocol and it relies on back and forth communication on the same wires, but you have to have confirmation that data arrives before you can send more data and it actually operates on a baud rate, just like an old dial-up modem would work. And because you have both of these different languages operating in the car at the same time, you need a device in between that can take both languages interpret and translate between them so modules on one network can talk to the other network. That is what the powertrain interface module does. It is the interpreter between the CAN language and the old class two serial language. So what happens is the CAN network makes it stop at the powertrain interface module. The signals on the CAN network get converted into a class two serial language and then spat out of the powertrain interface module. From there, they go to the body control module. And the body control module 
of course, controls the door locks, the windows, the mirrors, the radio, the cluster, uh, if you have the extra gauges, the airbags, all of the security stuff, and also the security for the key and the theft lock and the alarm system. It controls all of that. Now, apart from that, it also has signal wires that come back out of it to feed other things. One wire goes to the cluster, it goes to the auxiliary gauges, if you have them, and it also goes to the radio. And that is how you get that communication where when you volume up on the steering wheel, it also turns it up on the radio while also on the cluster telling you what the volume level is at because you have that interconnected network. And the other place that the serial connection goes is to the airbag module. And that is why when you use the VC cluster mod program, you can also access the airbag module and clear codes this is because it's all on that same class two serial network. To bring, make this more real and make it easier to understand, what I did is I kind of set up a dummy network here on the crewman. So I've got a wiring harness that I had laying around and I got modules, some spare modules I had laying around and I plugged them all in and I'm gonna take, take you through a visual tour of everything I just explained so you can see where all the modules are and you can understand how they're interconnected. Okay, I've got my little mock system set up here on the crewman, so I'm gonna show you how this all works. So we start here at the computer, and it is this blue connector on the computer that is part of the body harness. This is what we're gonna follow. This is where the CAN network goes, comes along back here, and makes its first stop here at the ABS module or the uh, electronic brake control module, whatever you wanna call it. From there, it goes out of the ABS module, follows this routing, goes into the car, and then it comes all the way along this section of the dash harness, all the way over here, and heads down to this white connector right here. You've probably seen it if you've ever had uh, the kick panel and the footwell taken up back here in the corner, that's where it lives. And you undo it, and you've got the can going out of this thing, and if you have an automatic transmission, which the transmission control module would live right back in there. It would go into the transmission control module and come back out and then back into the other side of this connector. Now, if you have a manual, what happens is this uh, goes out to a connector that's on the engine harness and it just makes a simple loop within the harness. So it goes out of the connector and goes right back into the connector and doesn't go to anything. But after that, it comes back up here and goes into this thing. This is the powertrain interface module. Now, if this was all assembled, this would be sitting up here like this, under the dash, under this panel that you can flip down, and it lives in here. So the can goes in here, takes the can measure or signals, converts them to serial, spits them out, and then sends them over to here which is the body control module. Body control module lives under here, typically. It's got a little bracket it clips into. And then this is what runs the car, the key, the security system, the windows, doors, all that stuff. And it takes those signals that are now on the class two serial protocol and sends them to the radio, which would be plugged in right here. If you had the auxiliary gauges, it also sends the signals to this connector right here. This is for the aux gauges. And then it also sends all that information to the cluster sitting right here. And the last place it sends signals is to the airbag module. So going back to the CAN network again, the CAN also leaves the powertrain interface module and makes one more stop right here at the data link connector. And it self terminates here the network stops so if you were say going to add any other modules you had to add them in front of this uh or the network or this or the devices just simply wouldn't work so now that you've seen where all the modules are in the gto i want to talk about what i think is the biggest issue that creates so many electrical problems in these cars and it's the grounding it's just it's interesting how they chose to ground certain things. So there's about 15 different grounding points in the car for all the different things that are in the car that need to be grounded. Most importantly, there are three we need to take a look at here. So I'm gonna show you those right now. So the first one, and the most important one, is right down here. This, if you've ever seen it, sitting down here behind the battery, is a giant ground bus that 
bolts to the chassis right here behind the right front fender. All of these wires right here are ground wires that come from various points inside and outside the car and they get spliced together. Small ground wires get spliced into bigger ground wires that get spliced into bigger ground wires and the vast majority of electrical grounds ultimately end up right back here at this point. And this is where I think a lot of people have problems with intermittent ground issues or electrical issues in their GTOs because this thing is just a connector. You can take it out of here. And in here you've got pins that these connectors obviously go into and you've got the connectors themselves. If those pins get corroded or rusted, if these connectors get corroded or rusted, if that little tab right there that attaches to the chassis is corroded or rusted, if the bolt that attaches it to the uh, chassis is corroded or rusted, or if the chassis is corroded or rusted, that will cause all kinds of issues because your ground is not a good clean ground back to the battery. Now, why did they choose to ground everything to the body as opposed to going directly back to the negative on the battery, which was sitting right here? I have no idea. They obviously have a good reason for it. I don't know what that reason is, but every Holden made from VX to VZ is basically the same way. The second most important one, and the one that a couple of other modules ground to, is right here. This one sits on this bracket that holds the ABS module in place. There are a lot of other crucial items that get grounded to this point right here. It's another body ground, and obviously it's supposed to transfer the grounds through the body, just like this one does, back to the battery. Now, there's also one other ground I can't physically show you, because I don't have an engine in place, but I can show you on the GTO because it's exactly the same. Might be a little dim, but there is a ground right here on the engine block. See that one blue bolt next to the wiring harness there? That is also a major ground point. It's one of the grounds on the engine block, one of three. Uh, it's mo mainly for the engine harness, but it does ground things that matter uh, inside the car. So this also needs to be tight. It needs to be free of corrosion. Same as that one. Same as that one. If you can see it down there, you might be able to see it. So now that you've seen where all the important grounds are in the car, uh, the next thing I want to show you is where the modules in the car are all getting their power from and how it gets from one point ultimately to the modules themselves. So I've gone through the service manuals and I've looked up all the crucial wires that run all the different modules and figured out one, where they're getting their power from, and then two, where they are grounded, because power and ground is the big reason why modules stop working in these cars, or at least it's the big reason. So the one that we're talking about here is the one that says, and I'll see if I can turn this so you can see it, main. Now in the Holden service manual, that would be listed as F105. I don't know what the Pontiac manual listed as, but that one feeds just about every module that's running in the car. As you can see, it's a 60 amp fusible link. A lot of power can handle, but a lot of the modules in the car are also powered off of one of these fuses that sits right here. The headlamps have got their own fuses, engine sensors have got their own fuses, the ignition system has its own fuse. The fuse we're worried about is listed as fuse 29, engine control BCM. This fuse is the one that sends power to just about every module that's inside the car. So now you've seen where all the modules are in the car, how they are all getting their power, and most importantly, how they are all being grounded. So there is one other issue I wanna show you, and I can't actually physically show you it, but I can show you where the problem arises. Um, there is one other issue we have to take a look at. So the issue I need to talk to you about here is the infamous harness rubbing, and it all takes place right down here where the body control module would live. You see how you've got these connectors that come off the body control module? This one right here is another one. This actually goes from the engine bay and dash harness, and it will connect to another harness that ultimately lives on the floor and runs all along the bottom of the car to run things like door locks and seats and fuel pumps and airbag modules and all of that stuff. 
the way that Holden installed these things at the factory in 04 and 05, this section right in here can ultimately rub on things. It can rub on plastic pieces, and in worst case, it can rub on metal pieces back in here. And it rubs right through the tape and ultimately rubs right through the sheathing on the wires. And they start shorting to ground and causing all kinds of phantom issues inside the car. So if you're ever having intermittent phantom issues and you've isolated your grounds and made sure that you've got good grounds and you've got good con contact for powering all of your modules, if you're still having issues, it could be these wires. Now they are supposedly fixed this issue in 06. I haven't heard of really any 06 cars having this problem, but 04s and 05s definitely had the issue. So it's an area I would definitely look at to make sure that your harness isn't getting rubbed through and your wires are shorting either to each other or shorting to ground. I think it can happen on any of these wires right here, uh, but most importantly, it will happen on this one here. And not a lot of body control stuff happens here. Some stuff does. There are some door lock things and window things. And this is for, mostly for rear speakers and stereo stuff and fuel pump. But it can cause phantom issues. You've also got this connector right here that can potentially be rubbed and cause some issues. There's not as much going on here. Uh, but it's also the fourth body control module plug, which is the biggest plug, is also part of that uh, body harness that is not here in the car right now. Those wires can rub too, and those will cause all sorts of issues. Um, so it's another area to look at if you're having phantom issues with your car. Okay, there's one more issue I want to talk about that a lot of guys are starting to see on these cars the older they get. And that is the fuel gauge error contact dealer message that you see on the cluster when you turn the car on and it won't start. There are one of two different reasons that this issue can occur. Number one, the cluster is no longer receiving information from the body control module. The second reason is the body control module is no longer receiving any information from the powertrain interface module. Now there is a simple way to verify which of these conditions you have going on in your car. All you have to do is get in, turn the key on, turn on the radio, try to use the steering wheel buttons. Now they should still manipulate the radio, but you should also see the volume changing on the cluster. And if you change the radio station or mute it, you should also see that information pop up on the cluster. If you are seeing that, your body control module is working. Now, if you're not seeing that, you could have a dead body control module. The most likely cause of it being dead are the results of a really bad ground or the body rubbing harness issue that we were talking about earlier with the harness wires rubbing in that corner by the body control module. Now, if you've got good body control module information, you have got some reason that you're not getting that data from the powertrain interface module. Either the powertrain interface module itself is dead or does not have power, or the CAN link has somehow gotten broken in the car. If you were unplugging connectors, working on something in the interior or under the hood, you may have inadvertently disconnected something that's got the CAN link on it, and now the CAN link is not established. You're not getting that CAN information to the module to be converted so the body control module can use it. So if you were in the car and you disconnected things, make sure you reconnected everything. Make sure that your engine computer is working. That should be pretty obvious. It's an easy way to think with HP tuners or just to check for codes to see if the computer itself is working. It's very rare for a powertrain interface module to die. It can happen. More than likely, it just isn't getting power or something isn't getting power that's part of the CAN network. So just make sure everything is getting power, make sure you don't have any blown fuses that control things, and it could most likely fix your problem. So hopefully this video will help you to seek out any phantom electrical issues that you are having in your GTO. Like I said, it doesn't cover every single thing that could possibly be causing an issue, but the vast majority of issues that people have with GTOs are either caused by bad grounds or a harness rub, or intermittent power because the connections for the fuses or things like that aren't as good. Check all of these things out if you're having problems. Hopefully it'll help you find what's causing your issue and you'll be able to solve it. Next one, I know exactly what it's gonna be for. I've got a sagging headliner in the GTO that's finally to the point where it's sagged out and hitting me in the head. So I'm gonna be showing you how to remove the headliner on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching Josh's Car Corner, and I'll see you next time.